Hello, good morning. Currently about 8.40. Oh, my phone. Oh, look at that, not even lying, it is actually 8.40. Psychic. Today I am challenging myself to build an ant weight in a day. Why? Well, let's face it, the only other robotics I've done is built a table with two holes in it and... That's what's left! That's <laughs> what's left! Yeah, um, more accomplished roboteers have built beetles in nine hours with quite a significant amount of success. Um, an ant weight doesn't really seem that hard, but for this idiot, I think it might be might be a worthy challenge. I don't have a workshop. This is my workshop. I have simple tools, so a rotary tool, a jigsaw, palm sander. So yeah, an ant weight might be might be doable for me. The chassis has to move under its own RC power. It has to be size compliant to the FRA build rule, so 10 centimeter cube. It has to have its safety circuit, which is the big issue for me because I cannot remember how to do any safety circuit. I've got a few guides that I will follow, so I'm not doing it completely blind. I mean, I'd like to keep it in weight. I'm not going to be fussed if it's overweight. If I've got weight left over, I might actually put an active weapon on it with a servo and whatever else we've got lying around. Uh, so nine hours to design, test, build. Um, we'll start at nine o'clock and hopefully by six o'clock we will have a working ant weight. I've also got to be considerate today as well. I can't just say, my cat, I'm building a robot for nine hours. Still got to do other things around the house. I'm gonna get ready with our timer, I think. There we go. Nine hours on the timer. Let's wait for nine. Be more dramatic. Talk amongst yourself. Oh, it's nine o'clock. Go. Nine hours started. Right. First things first. Put the kettle on. I did initially want to do Volta, do uh, an ant Volta, and I probably will do at some point. I'm more interested in this concept, a sort of wedge grabber pusher thing. Um, then, if the time dictates and the weight, of course, I will put in a big pointy, and that would be that um, family friendly. There we go. Grab a do. The name is the most important part of this build. Would you believe I'm only, what, 20 minutes in? And I've already laid out the plan. So this is the side profile. You can see we've got a bit of an angled wedge. This is the back profile. We're going to try and push it to the full 100 mil, 10 centimeter length. And that's the top. That's my usable area here because the wedge will be kind of empty we might be able to shove a few bits and pieces in there but realistically that's the usable area this measurement here wheel wise i have two sets of wheels these are the wheels that i originally used on chop suey the first robot i ever built they fit on the n20 motor shaft so that is a consideration they are quite heavy and these are the smaller profile N20 motor wheels that you tend to see on amp weights as well. Um, well. That's your size comparison there. The red line on here is for to compensate for the size of these because they'll have to be mounted further into the chassis. As the smaller 34mm ones can push right to the edge. 
The only thing is, is that with the size constraints that we've got, the red ones fit. I don't know if you can see it. The red ones fit outside of the chassis. Th this isn't accurate, by the way. This is kind of rough. But the wheels will fit outside of the top of the shell. Which means that this one can run inverted. But if we put these ones in, it can't. But with the combined weight that we lose from these, we might actually be able to fit the weapon in. Which is, which is this measurement here, 60 mil to play with. It might not be too bad, and the weapon actually might function as a Shri mech anyway. And that's my basic design. We're 20 minutes in. These are more scale accurate drawings that I've done uh, to make a cut list. It's something that I've learned from uh, Adam Savage. If you're going to start cutting things, you need to make an order of what you're going to cut it in. These aren't in order just yet, but these are what I want to cut out. We've got two side panels. A back panel, um, floor plan, a lid, and this is space for our front because I realise that because it's not a perfect square or rectangle, this line will be a little bit different. Something else I need to consider as well, whilst I, I realised when I was doing the floor, I need to compensate for the thickness of the material itself. So the polycarb I've got is quite thick, it's about 3 mil. I don't know if that's worth it for anything. This is a learning experience. I'll have to compensate that. I might do the floor first and then build everything else around it. That is my one hour review, I suppose. It's almost 10 o'clock. Let's get cracking. I'm an hour in now. It is 10 o'clock. That is eight hours left to go. Time flies, doesn't it? This is my cut list. I did originally start off with the floor, thinking that would be a most logical plan. Maybe not, I'll come on to that in a second. I'm actually going to start with the back panel, then we'll do the two sides, and then we'll do the lid, then we'll do the floor here. So I'm actually going to get rid of that there. We're not going to start with the floor. And then we'll do the front panel, because that's going to be the hardest. But I kind of mocked out how I'm going to build it, so the back panel I'll go first and then walls out. I don't know, I could probably do that here and move the front panel around. The floor will just hopefully slot right on the bottom. Uh, we're going to find a way to attach that so I can take it on and off, so I can obviously get to the innards. I have drawn out all of the parts that I need so far, including the front panel. Um, we're going to do that towards the end because I'm not sure if it's correct. We might find a way to redo it if I need to, but that's from what I believe is correct. <laughs> and then we're going to start cutting. Oh, three hours in, six hours to go. And I actually have a chassis, kind of. I need to take off a little bit off the edge, maybe the bottom side, definitely the bottom side, to make it more flush so the front plate will fit on the front like that. I have weighed it, it is a bit heavy. I'm not going for in weight as such. That's not my main priority. The main priority is to get it to move. How long are we in, in the countdown? Four hours 35 left to go at this point. What have I done? I've flushed out the ends. It's kind of holding its shape. Kind of holding its shape. Um, I need to cut out the holes for the wheels to go now. Whilst I've still got the rotary tool out, I'll cut out the wheel holes. It is two o'clock. Four hours to go. So it gives me about four hours to do the circuit. But wheel wheels are cut out, it's a bit rough, I know, it's not 100% symmetrical. What I'll do to mount the motors and the wheels onto all the rest of the space, it should be good for um, fitting all the components. I think I'll do the shell last actually, but I don't know, four hours to go, 
We're looking pretty good, not too shabby. This is the wiring in accordance to my wiring diagram. So we have a safety switch, a LED, there's the LED, two motors, two ESCs. Where's my receiver? <laughs> there is the receiver to go into the battery eliminator cables. Now I need to test it. And that's the thing I'm most scared about because it could go horribly wrong. It is a big thing. Because LiPo batteries and electronics do not mix. Well, they do, but they're also very dangerous. I'm scared. Okay, so here's a development. Um, I've spent the past however long trying to re connect this circuit because part of it didn't work. I found out that it was the switch. I did take a switch out and the, the circuit works. I find my battery terminal. So the LED is on. It is on. I don't know if you can see that. Grab my controller. Um, this is on. That one's on. Beat. That one boot. And the wheels are moving. Look. So the circuit does work, but I need to put the switch in, which was around about here. That's where I put the switch originally. Took it out because that was stopping it somehow. So now I've got to do a bit of research on how to get it to work with a switch. It is, what's that, 4.25. I've got an hour and a half. Put in a new switch and get the chassis all glued together and it all moving. But the circuit works, the circuit definitely works. This is the moment of truth now. Hopefully I have reattached the new switch on much better, but we know that LED in the circuit works. Ready? Okay. Safety circuits are not my forte. That's the reason why Volta wasn't ready for the Beetle Champs. So I got the safety circuit wrong. And now I'm doing it on a nine hour time scale. How fun is that? Right. All of these ESCs should beep. He did beep. Can I turn it off? It beeped, but the light didn't come on. I plug it out oh, because I plugged it into the wrong one. That goes to here. If the switch doesn't work, then we'll take it out. We'll try and get a moving chassis at least. Right, okay, this is the moment of truth. Oh, they both beeped. Did they both beep? They did both beep! They both on. Can they both work? <laughs> yeah. I'll have to do some controller mixing. Forward, backwards, left and right. <laughs> Currently I'm that way. That works. And the LED is on. It, it definitely is on, I can see that. And then turn it off. The LED goes off. Does it fail safe? Does it fail safe? Yep, controller goes off, the whole circuit goes off. Six Zeroths! It's half past five, set an alarm to give me half an hour grace. Um, this is how far I've got, I'm bolting it all together. We might be able to do this, we just might. As tight as they'll go. Half an hour to go. Stay there. Stay there. This bag here contains some scrap. <laughs> My plan is it's a bit lighter. It's not too bad actually. Not too bad. Can you see that? Not too bad. Right, we have 20 minutes. Less than 20 minutes left. 
we build it up and get it running. Still works. It will go in. I guarantee it will go in. Will it run on its own steam? The time is 5.43. It beeps, the light is on. <laughs> <laughs> it is the worst thing ever. <laughs> oh. oh, it's like a, a little Volta almost. It is very rudimentary, but it. it It works, it does Probably doesn't weigh anything near to compliant, but... Backwards, forwards, left, <laughs> Fifteen minutes to spare. Fifteen minutes to spare. I am... Um, I was just happy they moved, to be honest. I'm sure with a bit of tweaking, maybe some changing materials, you could get that to be properly competitive, I think. The idea wasn't to be competitive. The idea was to see that to make a moving unit in nine hours. Quarter to six, ten to six. I did it. I actually did it. <laughs> there we go. Maybe very rudimental and not very well put together but for nine hours for this idiot kind of compliant i mean it's it's a little bit overweight what was it 220 or something and but it does have a switch it does have a led power light but it's not very bright and yeah it's it's, it's all in there all fits and it does move but i don't know it was the experience wasn't it it was the trying to do it yeah, lily has stolen all your wheels yep that's fine i've got the ones that i need in here i'm glad that the circuit actually works i don't know we didn't get to do the top plate properly but we ran out of time so there's a little bit of volta on there a little bit of old robot history on there we go the time has gone off that's nine hours that's a robot it's done Let's go have some pizza. I'd like to give a massive thank you to Simon and the Robo Nerd Corps for allowing me to upload this video to the stream. And I'd like to give a thanks to you for watching it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked it. This video also appears on my YouTube channel where you'll find a plethora of other robot related projects. So recently I've built an Antweight Scale Arena and I've made a Pullback Scale Dominator 2 and I've also built a Terrible Beetle Weight. So a little bit of support over there would be much appreciated. Just search for Jimmy Cotton, Team OTT or Robotic Idiotic. Thank you ever so much. Have a great Robo Nerd week. I know it's not the same hanging around a pub car park surrounded by our favourite fighting machines, but regarding the current situation, I think this is a banging good idea. Stay safe everyone, and I hope to see you all in 2021, when hopefully Robo Nerd returns, where we can fight robots and hang out with our favourite roboteering heroes and other like-minded people from within this amazing community.